There's only one thing better than having a linebacker in your office, and that's having two linebackers in your office. If you're old enough, you remember the Reebok campaign with Terry Tate, the office linebacker. And although I'm speaking on a very serious issue in this video, I think it's important to relate the issue, if you will, to an ideal that most Americans understand. And that, of course, is keeping your head on a swivel. In this fictional world, there's a linebacker roaming the office. And so you have to keep your head on a swivel. You have to be aware because he could bring the pain. But really, the idea of keeping your head on a swivel is the closest American ideal to what I'm going to speak about in this video. The men in question are affected by the economy, but women's skills reduce the bills. Why do you think we see an influx of red pillars and podcast bros and passport bros? It's because men can't afford to date women, but men need women's undervalue, underpaid skills to help them finance their lives. That's why there's a push to have women like your grandmother. It's because your grandmothers had to give out their skills for free to be able to afford to eat. But now women have access to money so they don't have to give up these skills and requiring things from men that men don't want to give, i.e. emotional labor, um, to help with domestic labor, spiritual comfort, emotional safety. These are things men don't didn't ever have to work on because men cornered the dating market with their finances. On the surface, this just appears to be a run-of-the-mill TikTok, but what it really reveals is that we live in a culture that doesn't really revere what men bring to the table on a physical level. And so this young lady is very empowered to say that men need X, Y, and Z from women, but now that women have money, there's really not much that men can do for women except meet them and give them money pretty much. And if men don't have money, then they don't really bring much to the table. In a lot of the conversation that says decenter men and we don't really need men anymore, it takes for granted the fact that at every police station and at every fire station, in the military, wherever there are first responders, there are people and specifically men that are in a position to where they're ready to put their life on the line at a phone call's notice. And that is just an accepted fact of society no matter where you go. But recently, it seems that that is almost an expectation. And so if you live in that kind of environment where you're used to being able to either openly disrespect people that are not very rich or be openly disrespected because you're in a society where you're not that rich and it's allowed, when you go somewhere where you respect people because they are who they are and you make a mistake and don't do it, then you make the mistake of not keeping your head on a swivel, but in this case, honor is paramount. In my opinion, Ichiro Suzuki is one of the best five athletes ever in the history of humanity. And I'd say he's one of the best two or three baseball players ever. He has a reputation behind the scenes for being a fun-loving, gregarious guy, but he has a code. And if you watch the 2009 WBC, you would know that even Ichiro has his limit. I won't pretend like I'm an expert on the history between Japan and Korea. I just know that it's a long history that's very complicated and there are aggrieved people. But this game that they played in 2009, where Korea won the game and then planted the flag at the mound, incensed Ichiro. Normally a man who is very meek and humble, mild-mannered, to see this display of emotion from Ichiro is a show of what happens when someone that's even small in stature feels dishonored. And of course, in typical Ichiro fashion, he hits the go-ahead run and then they close out the game and the rest is history as Japan won the first WBC. But it's a show of what can happen when you dishonor even the smallest statured person. Everybody will be making a video about this now. When two days ago I asked the question, why ain't these people talking about safety over here? Your safety, things you can do to avoid being a victim of crime, of violence. An American was shot in Cebu City 
on St. Patrick's Day. Early Sunday morning, around 6.30 a.m., Michael George Ritchie, an American foreign national, was shot. You know, according to the article, was following a commotion earlier in the bar. This is Calvin from Sunshine Shoulders. I've covered him before. He lives in the Philippines and I do believe he's married and he has children there. And he's speaking about the situation on the ground there. And it's very important for guys that are going to go overseas, especially guys that are looking to go out and party or go after girls to find a mentor, someone like Calvin, to give you the lay of the law, to let you know where you can go, where you should go, where you shouldn't go, how you should act. Because unfortunately, situations like this happen. You didn't come over here to get shot. You know, you have to understand you're not at home. First of all, I want to tell my viewers, you're not at home. Yeah, remember all the videos I've made over the years, you know, talking about fighting over here and you know we come over here because we're much bigger in stature than the filipino but they don't mean anything these people will cut you in half man and never have a second thought about it you're on their home turf news reports cebu rapper arrested for shooting foreigner a local rapper singer in cebu was arrested for shooting an american national outside of a bar at a hotel later reports reveal calvin and our worst fears the young man didn't make it but take note of the situation that led up to this unfortunate incident. Because according to the article, the foreign national, the American, is supposed to have been uh, disrespectful to some female friends of this guy earlier in the bar. That he was touching their buttocks and different things like that. I, I don't know. I'm just going by what the news said. If you're a person that's interested in going to the Philippines to date or even to just recreate, I would suggest that you click the link in the description of this video. And if you can only watch the video of Calvin talking about the incident, but better yet subscribe to his channel, he's going to give you dimes of wisdom that guys, I guess our age can give you that he can give you for that particular country. And I could certainly give you for Japan where I am. For guys that have been in countries longer, they can tell you that there are lines that you simply can't cross. And one thing that you'll find is as guys get older, the kind of things that they do from going to bars to drinking out in public to getting inebriated around strangers, a lot of things that maybe you are used to in the States, you learn to gravitate away from those things. And most importantly, we don't really have a culture of respecting people in the States, especially people that we think are quote unquote below us because they don't make as much money as us, as you saw in the earlier TikTok. We base respect based on how much money or social class someone has. But when you go into someone else's country, it could be someone that's just a worker on the street. It could be a homeless person. It could be just a regular run of the mill person. They love their country. And if you go into their country treating them like you're better than them, that is not conducive to having a fulfilling experience. So in America, it's closer to keeping your head on a swivel. But really, guys that are going overseas really need to learn about the word honor and how to honor the people around them, even if they're not rich. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment below. I'll catch you in the next video. Take care, guys.